Hello and welcome to Water Cooler episode. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> God, Jesus, who will go and who will stay? <coughs> There we go. I was trying to save you because clearly you don't know what episode number I it is. I do. I what do you? What clearly? I was trying to help you out. Oh, thanks. But before I was so rudely interrupted, welcome to episode number two ninety one, also known as sixty nine plus sixty nine plus sixty nine plus sixty nine plus fifteen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you, Gary, for the save. I did not know the episode number <laughs> at the top of the show. And uh, we appreciate you listening. My name's Chris Loxmana. You know how the show goes. I kick it with my Corolla Digital Buds filet style with me today. Caitlin Beans here. What's going on? Hi, Kay. Oh, that was good. Is it good? Yeah, I had some projection. See, Caitlin flicks movies. He rates movies. I rate Caitlin's greeting. I've started to notice that, yes. That's definitely Chrisable. That was Chrisable. <laughs> uh, okay. 8.2 uh, out of 10 beans right that's there. That's a new, new, new scale. And he still uses beans. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Well, like, it has to relate somehow to the other scale. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Definitely Chrisable there. Yeah. Uh, Gary Smith's here. What's up, what's up? Yeah. Oh, Chrisable as well. Matt Fondelier. Hey, brother. I don't like this anymore. What, what, what don't you like? <laughs> hey, I like brother. that very Chrisable as well. You guys are all Chrisable. How does that make you feel? Kissable. <laughs> and Mike Dawson's here. Yay! Oh, wow. Crystable across the board. I have a very easy scale. If you're not crystable, then uh, there's something very, very wrong. All right, we got a lot to get to today. I mean, we got we got comments, of course. Mm-hmm. We got Shay Lasquet that we've been pushing for a couple or for a week about. Yeah, two full episodes, man. Yeah, Gary has a wedding conundrum that we got to get to. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. If Gary still remembers it. Is this going to be the new Jewish frat story? <laughs> no. Wait. What do you mean? We've done the Jewish. Frat well, I just story. mean eventually we'll release the details on Patreon. Ooh, but not those. for many years to come. <laughs> those aren't my waffles. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's start off with a wedding conundrum. This has been bothering me. I, I want to know what's going on. You went to Garrigus' wedding last week. I did. It was great. What uh, happened? Well, not Gar- Garrigus' daughter's Gar- wedding. Garrigus' daughter's Excuse wedding. Tenny, Tenny uh, rather. Um, and they were nice enough to invite me. And uh, this wedding, this invitation arrived in the mail. It was beautiful. And I was trying to figure out how this was going to work, right? So this is going to be a full-blown, you know, big event at Garrigus' house. I don't want to drive. But it's also on 4th of July. So... Uber's not reliable, especially not up in like the deep hills of La Cunata in the middle of the night. Why did they have it on Fourth of July? I mean, this is at his house. You could, it's not like a Saturday costs insanely more, and not like money would be a problem for him anyway. But right, um, I don't exactly know. I, I inferred from some of the wedding speeches that the Garriguses have a tradition of having Fourth of July parties at their oh. house. So when the double dip, right when the engagement came around, according to the groom. He proposed, and a few <laughs> hours later, Mrs. Garrigus texted him, how about July 4, or July 4th, 2021? Like, same afternoon. And he was like, uh, I don't know. And she was like, yeah, July 4th, 2021. <laughs> he was like, okay. All right. okay. Um, so it was a beautiful, beautiful event. So here's where the conundrum comes up. So I, I decide that I'm just going to arrange a car service to take me to the wedding and one to take me home. So I know what time they'll be there. It's dependable. It costs a little bit more, but on 4th of July, I decided not to F around with it. Did you bring the wife? I did bring the okay. wife. The wife, wife came, my wife, and my parents uh, stayed home and took care of my son. But the one piece that I kind of left out is I didn't figure out transportation from the wedding, which is basically at Universal City Nissan, the church right next door, to the Garrigus home in La Cunata. Mm-hmm. And what I was sort of so as, as the wedding approached a few days beforehand, I asked Mark, "Hey, is there any kind of transportation from the church to your house?" And he said, "I'll look into that for you." And then it never came up again. Hmm. Now here's the conundrum: so you get to this wedding, you sit there, you see Dr. Drew, you watch the whole ceremony, and then it breaks up, and everyone's sort of milling around. And we go out into the front, and there's a huge bus, like a full-size, like, charter coach, Mm -hmm. and then, like, a 30-person bus, like a big party bus as well. One's in the parking lot, one's on the street, and people are sort of going towards them. And we're all moving towards them, and my wife is like, let's go. Yeah. Let's get on one of these buses. Yeah. Now, that's what you guys would all do? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. One million percent. Especially. Did you get on the wrong bus? That's a good question. It is a good question. Was it just you and the bridal party on the bus? We don't, yeah, that's a good question, Kaylin. We have no way of knowing if there's right. a wrong bus. We have no way of knowing if these buses are, in fact, chartered by the Garriguses. They I, could be going to, yeah. Yeah, you could get on the bus and they're like, next stop, Springfield. Right. Yep. <laughs> they always do stop at a Springfield. Yeah. 
So the part where Gary, where I asked Gary specifically about transportation from the church to his house was looming large in my mind. <laughs> I ultimately decided not to get on one of the buses, mm-hmm. and the, the moment the buses drove away, I felt like the stupidest person in the world. Yeah. It took us 20 minutes for our Uber to get there, so we were sitting on the side of the street. They had locked the church. There was no one left, uh, and we were just these yeah. weird, dumb as shit, and just my wife. you and the lonely jam my wife, sleeping up she was just, I was yeah. just being roasted the entire time by my wife. And yeah. by the sun. Yeah, Deservedly the sun. so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anything, just get a skateboard and you hitch, remember, or skitch. You skitch, uh, you skitch the back of the bus and just ride straight over to Gary. Says, Why d- not get on a bus? I mean, they're, they, uh, they both have to be going to the after party or mm-hmm. the, what, Gary whatever. Gary didn't think what? he was good enough for the bus. Here's the thing. Yes, uh, I did not. I, I, had, I had low bus self-esteem because as we were. That is low self-esteem when you won't get on a bus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. up there yeah. Yeah. or down there. Well, the, I think one of the things Respect that conspired. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that worried me, Kalen, was right as we were approaching to do this, they cut one of the buses, and they were like, "No, we're full." And right. I was concerned that maybe they had an allotted number, and we were going to get on the second <laughs> bus, and then two people would show up and be like, "All right, who's not supposed to be here?" That yeah, that, well, that, that, that would have you, been. I don't want that. Just keep your then mouth. You can get, <laughs> no, then you can get off the bus, and you're a hero. You're the nice guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get ahead of it. you're the hero, but then when you get to the wedding, you're the guy who tried to scum the bus seats. Mm-hmm. Not the worst no, thing. No, you're mm-hmm. still the guy who, who gave the other people your seats. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, guys, I was supposed to be on this bus, yeah. but no, what? I will sacrifice my ticket for you, sir. Exactly. Or you just fa- – like what I would have done if, if – an elderly if, Asian couple. Mm, <laughs> then Gary, yeah. I mean, Gary, there. Well, then they would have to stand, right, Gary? I mean – um, if they didn't get there first, what you do, Gary? Since there were two buses, there were clearly two shuttles to get to Gary's house. If they were, if they were reserved, if they, if you were not on the tier to take the shuttle, you get on. You just go, oh my god, I was supposed to be on that one, the one that just left. Right? Oh, that's really good. And then, like, well, just take me anyway. Oh, I'm wearing I don't know, B. man. That's that's gambling right there. That's dangerous because now you're creating you're creating a backstory that you have to live with. And what if you get called on that? Well, wait a minute. You weren't on that. We were on any bus. Have you seen Wedding Crashers? They were like, we're from a maple syrup conglomerate. And it worked. Like, like, it all, people are, well, yeah, they don't you know. You don't know Jackie? It's true. You did, you did bring up Wedding Crashers. Yeah, so. that, that documentary? Of yeah, course. Right. Yeah, so I think you can get you can get away with a lot at weddings, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You should have gone, gone the bus. the bus. You should have gone the bus, Gary. Yeah. That's a shame. It was not good. Or, oh, well. or schedule the Uber. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I, I really wanted to get on the bus. I, I left... My house that day, assuming I would get on the bus in the moment. And when the moment came, I couldn't bring myself to risk it. <laughs> yeah. You know, they have wedding planners. They should have wedding attendance planners. I would plan you attending this wedding. I would have got your Uber. I would have made sure you were all set, got your Uber home, and, I would, and you, you just enjoy your night. I take care of everything else. Well, it's a good thing you got a get wedding your, coming up. Yeah. I got, I get sounds your, like the attendees are going to be Chris, yeah. you can do well this taken for me care of your wedding. I get your gift. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's perfect. You got me very something very expensive. I'm all in. (laughs) This just backfired. Um, Yeah, so I think that's that's what we should be doing. We should start a company that for people who attend weddings. Yeah, and make sure they're all set because there there are a lot of conundrums when you're attending a wedding. Where are you going? How am I getting there? Where am I staying? At what point do we cease responsibility of the wedding patron, though? Because I'm all for the first half of the wedding, but as those drinks start to flow, I don't know if I want to be held responsible. I don't know if I want to claim this, you know, drunk Uncle Bob is my uh, one of my clients for the night. Oh, you know what true, I mean? True, true. Yeah, you're definitely going to get some bad PR after yeah. a while. I, yeah, I see what you're saying. You're but... supposed to make sure I have a good time. <laughs> I think you I, did I, a terrible <laughs> job. I don't know where I'm supposed to sit. You I, didn't give me my cue card. <laughs> Blah. You know, like then oh, what do you do? Fucking mm. Bob. I, I think uh, I think what you do is you get a deposit. Uh huh. Yeah, and then you get it back if you played nice. If you played nice. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you come on, yeah. it's, we're we're on a contract here. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to have a good time. You're trying to have a good time, but not too to good of a time. No, no. Mm, well, if you get it. if you get like that, you're not having a good time. You're you you wake up, you had a bad time. Yeah. So I think yeah, and you embarrass your family. You don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, I think we have, we have a, a potential business. Yeah, that's good. Add it Gary's to the list. Room. Oh yeah, we got a bro- mystery bag. A bro- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mystery bag. We got we got a lot of sweet. sharks. You hear us? We got a whole episode already for like you guys. Queso Frisco. Yeah. See, we got we got soulless shoes. All right. <laughs> yep. soulless. I actually have a line on Mark Cuban. If we 
really want to do this. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. There we go. Oh, what see? if the water cooler dropped in? We had a whole episode of Shark Tank. <laughs> Then we're like the five people. Each one of us comes up with a different one. It's a whole episode dedicated to just us. And then Is that how the show works. I don't watch the here's show. The, here's the Shyamalan <laughs> twist: they all start fighting over the water cooler. Oh yeah! yeah. And like, like I'll so give you a hundred thousand dollars for a twenty five percent stake in your podcast. Hmm. This is what happens, Mike. This is what happens. So the the theme song for Shark Tank plays. It's all five of us. Hey, we're the guys from the water cooler. We walk into the room. Well, sharks. Pitch us, yeah. and they have to pitch us. Yeah. Why we should pick them? Because that's how that's how it goes. Yep. We have nothing behind us. We're all just wearing what we're wearing now. We're not taking questions. We're like what? <laughs> yeah, we're not taking questions. <laughs> just come on, give us your pitches. We'll choose you. This is great. Yeah. See, we pitch them a new show. <laughs> we just pitch them a whole thing. Look at us. All right. Well, anyway, we got a lot of show today. We got Shay Lasky. Let's do comments. You guys need some comments? Yeah. Let's yeah. Do, it. do it. All right. Here we go. That one took me a while because I was like, I almost played the outro. Can't do that. Because you can only get outros on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash watercooler. But this is all, these are all listener comments and client mail from our Facebook group. It's not that. Our Facebook group. Definitely not that. that. And uh, to join the Facebook group, I I say it's my favorite place on the internet. You just go to facebook.com slash groups slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. Answer a few questions. We might let you in. All right. You can picture it now. Here we go. Let's kick this one off. Ooh, I like this. Michael Wiley. He created a poll. He says, uh, you just set up audio at a venue. Oh, this kind of would apply to Matt. You just set up audio at a venue. Like I do every day? What are we talking <laughs> no. about? And you need to test the output. You uh-huh. only have these songs available. What do you go with? And comment with the other soundcheck options. Um, so what song are you soundchecking audio with? Dark Knight theme song. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> the wow. Dark Knight theme song. Dark Knight theme song. Boom. Mm. Yeah, what would you... If you're checking to see if the speakers are playing, there's some people in the room. Baby got back. Baby got back is what oh, you put on. That's pretty good. You know, I got to say, I I saw this in advance, and somebody put DMX party up, and I thought mm-hmm. that's pretty good. That one's good. That's a good one. That one always gets the yeah. ring going. I think. Well, Thunderstruck was number one by like a landslide. Okay. And uh, what's the drinking game with Thunderstruck? Do you have you guys ever played it? Nope. Uh-uh. No. No. It's like you have to drink your beer, and you can't you can't stop drinking until they say Thunderstruck. Or in between them saying Thunderstruck. And there are some long gaps. So you're in a circle. Mm. And every time they say Thunderstruck, the next guy has to go. And then they say Thunderstruck. Then Gary has to go until the next guy does. And there's some ones that like take like two minutes to wow. say Thunderstruck. Yeah, That's so, good. It's a fun drinking I game. Like that. But that one won number one. Brain Stew, Green Day. Number okay. two. Seems a little random. Uh, Alan Parsons Project, Sirius. Number three. Is that the one that Austin picked? No. no, so this is a poll. Yeah, this is a poll. Well, so far the Alan Parsons Project it, one is the only one that I feel would have the frequency spread that you need when checking a sound system. Nerd alert! No, DMX is going to be really low bass. Basket case ain't going to you know it's mm-hmm. there's not there is much a whistle at the very variation. top of party up. That's pretty high <laughs> frequency. Yeah. Ooh, so, I like this. someone put Sandstorm by Darude, Kalen. Okay, that's something yeah. that Insomnia could get behind. Yeah. You know something Sandstorm. Awesome. Behind no. many times. It's that techno song. It's like the first like real poppy techno song that like that became kind of mainstream. What you guys sing it for us? The one that they do the Six Flags commercials <laughs> to? No, no, it's uh Now be big smalls. <laughs> that one, you know that one, right? I, no. I uh, thought you did a great job, but I don't know what song that is. And I'm not trying to be a dick. I heard a long time ago. I'll answer my question, the question. Answer it. Um, Jefferson Starship Miracles. It's got a nice long build, and it touches all the frequencies. Mm. And it's non-offensive, and it creeps up on you, and people are like, Oh, well, it must be house music. Here's my question. How long are you allowed to play the song for? Not that long. You don't play for that long. No. So doing like You're a big g- epic, like you don't want to do Stairway to Heaven or something because people aren't going to sit there, listen to eight minutes you want for something, the sound check. Right. You want something pretty full that kind of, co- as Austin said, covers all the frequencies. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but gets and you, you so you can figure it out quickly. If you play Stairway to Heaven, you, Heaven, you have that intro, the guitar intro. It's soft. Doesn't even yeah. get rock. It takes a while to get. Yeah, it, it needs. Uh, yeah, you need you need kind of an you instant. You get the frequencies pretty. Quick. That's why Saints are. Yeah, that's a good one. Right. Did I do that okay? <laughs> yeah, no, it was okay. good. That was All good. Right, that's good. Should I know this song? You probably would if you heard it. Yeah, Chris but I wouldn't it hear it. Second. So on the other hand, don't you think you didn't do pretty good? No, Why do I, I need to play. I just good. yeah, no, you did a great job. But for those of us who really want to hear what it sounds like, <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious now, and, and I promise you, I'm not going to look it up later. So now is the time. Yeah, I agree. All right, and I imagine most listeners won't either. Yeah. <laughs> well, because they don't need to. They all figured they it all, out. They by all the felt time. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh Wait, man, it sounds like this. So we're doing a sound check. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got taco red, so YouTube doesn't fuck us over. Oh, they're still gonna get us. <laughs> <They're still laughs> See, now we're already. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's yeah. the Riddler's Revenge song. Is it? When you go, oh. on, when you go Six Flags, you go on the Riddler ride. This is the this shit is they're the playing. Six, oh, and yeah. when you're waiting so in the line, Six Flags thing. The Six Flags song. Deal figure eight. <laughs> Where's Insomniac? Oh my god! Oh, we're you know, so see? demonetized. <laughs> oh, god, yeah, stop it. All right. Anyway, you guys get it, right? You, Dawson, bye, money. Never heard it before. Never heard that. Never been on the Riddler. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I've never been to Six Flags. Really? That's a bummer. You should go, man. It's um, open. That should be your next song too. Yeah, I'd love it. Okay. Never been to Six Flags. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've never been. To Six Flags. That was the park where I almost died on that roller coaster. I told you guys about it. Yeah. yeah. I've climbed a Magic Mountain, but not that one. Oh. oh it's right. It writes yeah. itself. It's a, wow. It's a it gold writes mine. itself. Yeah. I just want a songwriting credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah, I like that lyric. I got yeah. one word for you for your next song Colossus. Colossus. Yeah, one, one yeah, you got you, you to put that in there. Yeah. You got to put Talk about Viper. Matt almost dying on Superman. I'm yeah. hearing a concept album. Do they sell <laughs> corn dogs? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. You sure do. Yeah, hell yeah. Are they good? I bet if you know the right guy, there's a goat in the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See? And uh, there is there is a ride that if you. Pet a goat. When you're, when eat you're, a corn dog. And fuck off. Fuck off. When you're ascending. You, the, the scariest part of the roller coaster. It's all uh, probably one of the most fun parts too. Is just as you're slowly ascending and just realizing this is higher than than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. This is getting pretty high. But right before the big initial drop, um, one what? of the rides they play uh, Enter Sandman, just like the riff to right. Enter Sandman. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's that's kind of fun. Get you pumped. Can, what does that sound like, Chris? <laughs> um, all right. No, wait, hold on. I gotta. I'm gonna open this up a little further here. Please. Dawson, you've never been to Six Flags. Have you experienced very intense roller coasters before? Oh hell yeah. Okay. We had. I grew up in the Bay Area. We had Great America. There you go. Okay. So you have up had there. That. Okay. And now, ironically, it's a Six Flags. Dawson, have you done a an aggressive roller coaster like that in the last 15 years? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Disneyland with a kid, the kids a couple of times. Eh, not Disneyland. The, no. California the Screaming? California Screaming. Well, like, uh, That's fun. I like the Tower of Terror. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, the California Screaming's pretty cool. Yeah, that but was it's, fun. It, 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 yes, I've been on awesome, gnarly yeah. uh, roller coasters, but not in, you know what? Not in the last 10, 15 years. Well, okay. See, that's yeah. why I asked. If, if Disneyland doesn't count, then no, not trip. in the last 10, 15 years. Well, you hear a lot of people say that when they get into their 40s and stuff, they have a hard time with the like aggressive roller coasters. Oh, those people are pussies. I was just going to say that I'm getting <laughs> nauseous just talking to you guys. <laughs> like, I'm uh, actually picturing myself on some of those rides, and it is making me woozy. Roller coasters I, I, I'm are I'm having fine. a harder time on airplanes these days. Mm. Ooh. Got to get a tour bus. Airplanes I used to be. Oh, God, no, dude. No, anyway, you spend like five days on a tour bus. Yeah. And you are seasick to death after like the fourth day. Ugh. Get out of that bus and everything's still moving. You better have Dramamine. Not fun. The uh, Yeah, so the roller coasters for me are fine. I'm okay with them. I don't like spinny rides. I probably won't go on any more spinny rides. Like the ones where you stick to the wall? The ones you stick to the wall. The teacups, Gravitron. The one, yeah, anything that just goes in a circle and will potentially get you dizzy. Sure. I, I, that's what I, I can't do. Or the Harry Potter ride at Universal Studios. Tea that cups? one. Well, Those oh, spin okay. fucking fast, dude. Get your Gary, into that. Gary, would, don't you control on, how fast they spin? The yeah, track. and I freaking go for it, Kaylin. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I don't like it. I don't like how much I commit, but I have to. 
All right. <laughs> yep. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. I could sit there and do nothing, but I waited in line just to sit there and do nothing. No, I'm going to spin the f out of this yeah. teacup. Yep. Good call. Sure. It's because he doesn't Wait reach around. the. You must be this tall to ride this on most other rides of teacups. Mm. Is what it is. <laughs> the disgust on Chris's face as he watched Austin go for it. Shit. <laughs> Ah, shoot your shot. It's fine. I <laughs> <laughs> was cheap. It was. I feel That's like Chris right. is easier on it if it's a good joke. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. I, know. I, I dig it. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's great. Everything's sure. good. Sure. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see here. Steve Clacy. Oh, by the way, for, before we uh, get into the next one, gr- great job on Saturday, Don. You as well, man. Um, hey, both you of you guys did great jobs. It. Yeah. What do you think, Kalen Gary? Yeah, I, I definitely felt that. I, I was watching along on Facebook, but I couldn't be there. I couldn't get a babysitter. So how were you watching along on Facebook? People yeah. were like posting photos and stuff of oh, you guys nice. live on the uh, in the Bobo Boy Army Worldwide Facebook. Oh, nice. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Roo. Well, Doss, um, so I had an interesting experience there because I, we our band played second. We didn't get a sound check, but we had to do a line check, and the guy just like, play a song. But you don't want to play a song that you're going to play on the set during the set, right? You don't want to. Yeah. I so, was expecting at least, you to play that at song. At least not one you're going to play right away. Right away, yeah, because yeah. it's just like everyone's already kind of waiting around. It's, but yeah, it's just, you don't okay, want to play check. something in your side. So, so you played Closing Time and so, everyone left? So we played, <laughs> uh, we, we played a verse of Mo Money, Mo Problem. Sure. And then uh, and a little bit of Sex and Candy, just yeah. a touch, and then we, we went into the set. So. And people were pissed that it was just a sound check. Yeah, you did have to let the crowd know, yeah. stop dancing, we're just <laughs> testing the sound yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah I know. But uh, Steve Clacy, a L- lot of good, lot of good army people there. Yeah, thank you guys Roo. for coming, oh, out. Oh, oh, including oh, oh, oh. It's guys and girls, in- including the aforementioned Steve. He said amazing, amazing show last night. Smoking kills, locks in the falling stars, fallen stars. Excuse me, the fallen stars absolutely crushed it at at a very cool venue. So there you go. Thanks to everybody who came out. We had a blast. Casey Peters asked a question: Am I the only one that watched the McGregor fight? No. You're the only person in the entire United yeah. States that watched it. And unfortunately, <laughs> the pay-per-view system is forever altered. We will no longer be doing it because there was just one person who tuned in, and that was you. Yeah. Well, did I, did I answer his question? You sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't, I, I did see the picture. I didn't like what I saw. Yeah, I did too. It was, yeah. it was exactly what I hate Yep. in everything. Yep. Yeah, so I, I saw the picture. I didn't like it. It's about as bad as <laughs> everything I hate. Be. Yeah. I don't know if it was during your set. Or uh, the Fallen Stars set, but uh, right in the middle of somebody's set, I hear oh. my drummer Rainin go, Motherfucker, I recorded it! And I look over, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And uh, Izzy had just shown Rainin. He just, and, and it was a total miscommunication. Uh, Izzy's, Izzy sees the break, and he's like, holy shit. And Rainin's like, what is it? What is it? And he showed it to him. Oh. And then Raiden got fucking super pissed. He was fine after like 10 minutes, but <laughs> yeah. it was funny, dude. Yeah, that was during... I was like, take it on <laughs> That was during our set, and uh, it was during the ballad. It was during the, yeah, it was the right during the ballad. Yeah, the, the very... Like... Yeah, the, the warm, uh, slow part. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then Casey, Casey Peters ended it with Goddamn. And I was thinking, I don't like saying Goddamn. Well, I don't yeah, know why. Word. I like God, uh, it goes against your religious I, morals. Well, the thing is, I don't go to church or anything. I, I did. I was raised Catholic, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm I'm thinking about. It. I'm like, I don't say that ever. I never say it. You know what? Now really? that I think about it, I say God bless it a lot. You say God bless it a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Are there words that you guys just don't you just don't like saying? Like you say, you're like, oh, I don't like saying that. <laughs> No, There's a couple. Are you, nope. about to, are you trying to get people canceled? What are you doing? <laughs> that you, that you, yeah, there is one word. <laughs> you know what I will? <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. God. <laughs> you know what I will say, just to completely change the subject and try to get us out of this, is Nick Davis was at the fight. And oh, he was right. tweeting, like live tweeting his experience. And at a certain point, he got much lower than I think he paid for. And he was like, I'm down in the lower bowl. Like, I'm not, I'm not leaving. And then at a certain point, I saw another tweet. It looked like he was maybe back up <laughs> where he was supposed to have been. But uh, that, was, that was fun. Now, this is a big chance this Halloween. Nick can do that same costume oh. that he did, but this time with a gimpy ankle. Yeah. What do you guys think? Uh, it didn't end so well for him the last time he did it. <laughs> so I'm going to advise to skip. But yeah. All right, let's see here. Spencer Smith has a question. What is everyone's 
what is everyone's protocol if you get sick from a restaurant? We just had we had calamari that tasted like it turned, and the whole group was sick shortly thereafter. Do you tell the restaurant, or do you just go home and puke your guts out? You should tell the restaurant. Yeah, you should let them know. They should stop serving that if it's bad. Yeah, you would call. And they may offer you. You're uh, you're obliged now. You have to tell the restaurant free something or other. I um, yeah, yeah you might get oh, your dinner oh, for free yeah. too. Like oh you got to go. Oh, yeah. Sorry, so, here's, here's, people here's, did say that in the comments. Like do that and you get some free food. But it's like why yeah. would why would I eat there again? Yeah, <laughs> That's so, just, you got to let them know out of out of respect for your fellow person. Yeah, let them just call them. Hey, this didn't make me feel good. You probably shouldn't serve that, or at least take a whiff. Take a whiff of the of the Mari before you free hit it. Go ahead. I want to know where this um, uh, sub zero temperatures. Sorry, sorry, my volume was down. I don't feel satisfied. Found the claw's only weakness. Sub zero temperatures. Oh, we heard that. Oh, you got to even it out. Is this is this claw mentor landlocked individual? Spencer, or was this a coast of the coastal coastal calamari town? I didn't I didn't take that deep of a dive. Is it coastal coastal, coastal Mari? Or? If, if you're in if you're in Omaha. And you ordered the calamari, you got exactly what you deserved. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so Spencer, at least take take that into account as well. I mean, here's the thing. If you throw up at the restaurant, they'll kind of figure it out for themselves. Yeah, but it takes the food poisoning takes longer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I ordered a takeout the other day for breakfast. Got some omelets to go. Mm-hmm. This really great place in Long Beach, the Coffee Cup Cafe. Real Are they going to be glad right you mentioned the their name at the right end of the, the story? <laughs> yeah. I hope so because they they got good omelets. All right, I will be I will be returning. <clears throat> and so I ordered a couple omelets for me and Jen, and like a little French toast thing for Jen's mom who's coming over. And and it's it's very affordable. Like the French toast, six bucks. The omelets, like eight bucks each. And I get there, and it's cash only. So I'm like, I'll bring forty bucks. That'll cover everything, and then I'll, yeah, whatever. Just like so, I don't have to think about how much it's all going to cost with tax and tip. And I get there, and she's like, $36. And I'm like, oh, I only have $40. I'm like, all right, well, here, just take and keep it all. And I left. And I'm like, doing the math in my head. I'm like, I bet she meant 26 or some – like, yeah, she meant $26. Either that or you have someone else's order. Yeah. Well, I didn't. It was my order. I was the only takeout order there at the time. And I'm driving away, and I'm thinking, do I turn around? No. No, you're done. It's all, it's all done. But I, yeah. I just paid $40 for, for eggs. Take the L and go home. <laughs> Oh, well, I took that L. Listen, yep. they're working hard coming yeah. out of the pandemic. They deserve the extra money. That's I justified it the exact same yeah, way in my right. brain, Matt. You like that? Yeah, I have to do that. Like every time I get a parking ticket, I'm like, I saw a lot of music in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's all, all caught just up. Yeah. Steven Schumster, every time he has a daughter, he says, I was a total dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Chris, that you you would bring that up. I was saying to my wife earlier, I, my wife, uh, earlier this weekend, I, I don't even remember what we were t- talking about, but I kind of realized, like, yeah, I don't do anything illegal anymore at all, mm-hmm. which I, I don't know if I've been able to say that much in my life. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Let me see if I can think of anything Gary does illegal. Yeah, I guess that, because I know... These we, days. Yeah. There was, there was a time where I was digitally yeah, you, felonious. Yeah, you you had ways to get, get <laughs> digitally what you... felonious. You say, <laughs> yeah. You want to expand on that? Sure, don't. It's okay. a great Miles Davis record. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Doss, uh, feel free to use that songwriting credit on yeah. the acquire. <laughs> oh, that's who wrote the the Never Been a Six Flag song with you. Yeah. There Do you, you drive over the speed limit? And I know the answer because I've sat in your car before. <laughs> Ooh. I'm trying to help you, man. I'm just trying to help you. Yeah, Gary. You don't want to be fully legal, bro. I don't. Misdemeanors are a different discussion. <laughs> 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 Moving violations, yes, but I don't yeah. get caught often. Dude, that was a big fear, like with like Napster and everything. You hear these stories, oh man, you hear this guy, three towns over, got caught, had to pay Capital Music $400,000. Yeah. Yeah. Did all... those things ever happen or did they just know. say that to try to scare us? I don't know. I mean, I scare people who did that. I prob- <laughs> Not I'm me. Sure it's-, <laughs> it's Capital Records, Chris. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Capital Music. Look, I'm just trying to make the point, Dawson. <laughs> you know, want to nitpick? Just, I can't. Yes, I had to nitpick that. All right. That's fine. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, you always hear stories like that and you never, you never really follow through with it. But I, I know a guy had to pay Sony songs 300000 you personally knew this person. It's Sony Music. Yeah. I was oh. going to say. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So he's, all, right. all right. Well, anyway, Katie McDonald, Kaylin, she has a flicking request. Okay. Ooh, don't tell your girlfriend. 
<laughs> she writes, Dear Kaylin, flicking a request, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. Hmm. Sincerely, someone who has watched too many bad movies. Judging by Matt's reaction, it must not be very good. That wasn't my I, reaction. That was Gary's reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was me. And it's it's a. Uh, well, I was just very. What glad is it? I don't even know what it is. Well, I'm very. I'm definitely into the Resident Evil video games. I love me Resident Resident Evil. And that movie I did see on Netflix. It's like an animated one. Um, and I have tried many times to watch the various animated Resident Evil movies, and I can't make it past like the first fifteen minutes. That stands as unflickable. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. There's Karen. not. I'm gonna be honest, Katie. There's not a very good chance that I'm gonna be able to. We'll call it unflickable. It. Unfl- have you unflickable. have you heard of or tried the uh, animated version of um, what's the kaiju movie? Uh, Pacific Rim. There's like a Pacific Rim mm, no, animated series. It's getting it gets really good reviews. Hmm. Yeah, that first Pacific Rim was awesome. That it was it apparently in the theater. Yes, apparently Great. this series that I'm talking about ignores the second movie and just builds oh, after the oh, first yeah. one because they All understood right. the movie. I could watch that. All right. The first Resident Evil scared the shit out of me. It traumatized Game or me. movie? Uh, both. Mm. Yeah. Both. My bro- older brothers played the, like the first Resident Evil, and I was a little kid. I used to love, love watching them play video games. It was too scary for them. Yeah. And yeah, it scared the shit out of me yeah. as a kid. That was a scary mm. game to play. And then the movie where they're in that room with the lasers. Awesome. Yeah, it's just charred into my brain. Yeah. I'll always remember that scene mm. and what it did to me because I saw it in theaters, Caelan, believe it or me not. Me too. Before Wikipedia. Yeah, pre-Wiki. It's Pre-Wiki. Wow. Mm-hmm. Eric Lepore, he has he had a poll here. He says, As a hot dog connoisseur, I do a lot of grilling and outdoor cooking. I have multiple smokers and grills. My favorite is my Weber charcoal, which made me wonder, what do my fellow Boba boys and girls prefer to cook when they're outside? I'm talking just an average hot dog and hamburger after work or a nice steak on a weeknight. What are you using? This is how the poll uh, – these are the results here. Gas, uh, number one, 46 votes or broats. Heathens. Charcoal, 36 broats. Wood pellet, 16 broats. And then the flat top grill. I don't. I don't want to I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't want to <laughs> Several choices down. <laughs> we we Bro. found the line, Chris. The first one I was it's like, right there behind you. Yeah, yeah. You passed uh, it. I, I I tested. Bro. I dipped my toe yeah, in the yeah. water. You guys, you guys no. didn't react. No, like, let, let it go. Warm. Let it go. Water's yeah. warm, baby. Here, here we go. I'm diving in. I want. I need to I hear it two or three times. I kind of liked it. I was feeling it out. I took a couple of laps. Yeah. See, I'm gonna go with. I think I went into shock. Like I think I just like blacked out. I was traumatized. I know what. Do yeah, I All know right. what to do. Well, gas is number one, charcoal number two, uh-huh. wood pellet number three, flat top number four. Flat top. That's when you cook on a dude's head. What yeah, is that? yeah. You took you cook, on the you street, a flat top grill. You took on a like marine head. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a uh, yeah. It's a yeah. It's a hibachi. skillet. It's like a yeah. Outdoor it's a griddle. Skillet. Okay. Griddle. Yeah. A griddle. griddle. Hansel and griddle. <laughs> nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, I have a gas grill. I imagine charcoal would be incredible, but I don't have one. So I just use what, a gas grill. What do, you, do you, what do you prefer to eat? Like if, you, if you're going to your friend's house and they're cooking, what would you prefer them to have? I mean the only time I've ever really had charcoal grilled stuff is in Mammoth, which you guys know I love talking about. My dad oh, would yeah. always use the charcoal grills up there. Yeah, and my from- memories of it was that it would take way too long. And, you know, the meat would come out like raw. He couldn't cook it properly. He didn't really know how to do it properly. So I'm going to say gas all the way. Ah, okay. It's a little more controlled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know what I'm getting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gary, what about you? I Gas is the easiest, so that that's what I typically would use. But charcoal is a superior – will create a superior – end result for sure mm-hmm. but it does take a while and it's a pain in the ass and you have to clean it up after um i'm interested in the wood pellet thing oh yeah but haven't tried it yet they have like smart ones gary i know they do for you, so you gotta watch what you say around those <laughs> yeah yeah They'll be smarter than us before you know I it know. They'll, they're gonna take over that's uh, what we do that that's exactly what i have my eye on chris <laughs> It's one oh. of the connected ones where it'll just tell your phone, like, all right, time to yeah. move the brisket. Meat's ready. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, Gary. I have to turn <laughs> all of the gas meters on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a freaky movie. Ken, what about you? You know what? I'm going to be very honest. I don't have strong feelings about grills. Or music. <sighs> or hurts. music. That um, really hurts. As long as the meat gets cooked. Then I'll eat it. And okay. Then it's fine. I think you would if you if you were able to A and B him. 
Like Excuse if I me? gave you a charcoal, if I gave you a charcoal patty and a one that's cooking a gas grill. Okay. Yeah, I think I think you'd be able to taste the difference. All right. Mm. Hank Hill would say propane as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doss, what about you? I just got a new grill. Oh, right. that's and right. It's called the 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 model number that they call it is the Smoking Champ. Get out of here. Which was kind of funny that yeah. I didn't even realize until I brought it home. My friend saw it. It's like, dude, the fuck. Um, I like charcoal with a cast iron grate. Then you can get this stuff really hot. It's like the man grate mm. thing. Oh yeah, sears those are it cool. really well. And um, yeah, chicken thighs and Italian sausage, maybe some linguica. Yeah, that's that sounds it. great. I, I'm I'm with Garrett. I prefer the taste of charcoal, but the convenience of gas, and I'll probably use a gas grill just for the convenience. Uh, all right, let's I feel see like here. You really did a good job answering his question. I think so. We don't Speak, always do that. Speaking of that, uh, that's very terrifying movie that Matt just uh, created with the the smart grill. Mm-hmm. You yeah. guys just watched a trailer. Two of the guys in this room watched a trailer for Pig. Yeah. What is that's that? Right. Ryan came in our came in our uh, conference room. It's just like you guys watched the trailer for Pig yet. You gotta watch it, and I didn't watch it yet. So, but Gary, can, can, can you describe what happened? Now uh, you can pump your ears if you need to. Well, <laughs> Ryan walked in unsolicited. I think based on some other conversation we were having, he was like, "By the way, guys, have you seen this fucking trailer? It is going to blow your fucking mind." The people in the theater were like laughing at it, like it was it was wild. And to be fair, he's not bad at at recommending things. Yes. He's recommended Ryan, a number of things, and they've. Ryan has okay, a thanks for that recommendation. Ryan that has a good. decent track record of pointing out things that are that are good and whatever. So I went and checked this trailer out. It's a weird movie, but very serious. It it, it opens kind of. It seems like it's almost like a John Wick. Yes, ah. guy alone in the woods. Okay, pig, I'm in. Is this pig okay. that he's very fond of? Who's the guy? The guy's Nicolas Cage. Oh, he's got the full beard, full mountaineer look going. Being and played by John Travolta. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the real story, though, of Nicolas Cage. Based on Cage. the documentary. Yeah. Wow, that's really meta. And yeah, as Gary said, it's very serious. And then someone, like, busts in and steals his pig. So he seeming, seems to, like, go on a mission to go find his pig. And I'm like, oh, is this going to be kind of like a John Wick-type spoof? You know, he's like this mm-hmm. assassin that's, that's, silly. That's, that's out into the woods. and It's this silly, is what but... I, this is what I thought as well uh, up until a certain point in the trailer. And that was realize, the vibe. Right. And then you realize, no, he's just looking for his pig. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy, like, g- goes from his, like, reclusive life in the woods with his pig to, like, back to the city and meets with, like, he's a former chef and meets with all of his contacts throughout the culinary world. And he's like, where's my fucking pig? All right, we're getting into ear pumping territory. <laughs> more, That's it, man. Say. The movie's called Pig for anyone interested. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. I think I'm in. I think I'm out. Oh, yeah, I I based that. off of that. That description, I, I'm in for sure. I mean, I feel like I have seen most Nicolas Cage movies. And I have think you seen you have Jiu Jitsu? <laughs> no, we have not seen that one yet. Well, stay tuned, Mall of Money Tier. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that brings me to uh, my next subject. Then P N C. We've kind of discussed mm. this. We've done we've done Face Off v Con Air. Let's Face Off. Well, Con Air's see, but better, so much but. better in Face Off, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Connor's Not so much, off. but slightly. Okay, well, I'm going to say a controversial choice. What am I going to say, Keon, with your s- fucking smug look? What am I going to say? I can see it. Just You're wearing gonna... a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can see his eyebrows. Yeah. You're going to say National Treasure. That is great. That's what Gary's going to say. That's not what I'm going to say. Oh. That's, that's not what I'm going to say. Oh. Oh, really? oh. Wow, so Kalen's really wrong. <laughs> Freaking smug mask, Kalen. I'm going to go with a dual performance. Uh-oh. Little movie called Adaptation. Nicolas Cage plays author Charlie Kaufman and twin brother. Now, are you taking his looks into account? Mm. Definitely not in this movie. Well, in PNC, his penis. You know what mm. the cow says, right? <laughs> I'm saying it is such a great version. It shows you but it's not the, the depth of his penis because he's available <laughs> to do so many things with it. You what know? About, what about the whip? <laughs> Dawson, are you okay? He yes. lost it. He's yes, lost that it. was just that was that was that was good. The depth <laughs> of his penis. Um, I love adaptation. He's fucking amazing in it, and uh, that's that's the penis for me. All but, right, but, I, but you know, 
Con Air is really good too. Mm-hmm. What about you, Gary? It's face off. You guys are all insane. It's very oh, clearly it's face off. Obviously, it's well, it's face off. But yeah, I mean, it, the close second would be National Treasure Two: Book of Secrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, face off is the correct answer. I'm changing mine. Yeah. You're right, Dawson. Yeah, it's clearly right. face off. Face off, really? Thousand yeah. percent. A million percent face off. He's so goddamn good yeah. in face off. It's incredible, and it is. It's almost like his penis more than anything. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Let go of the bunny. No. Please drop the bunny. <laughs> Put right. down the bunny. Put Please. down the bunny. Yeah. Please. Oh, Wait, this, there's one scene in particular where Nicolas Cage is in this moment. It is John Travolta, quote unquote. But Nicolas Cage is acting like John Travolta pretending to act like Nicolas Cage. So he is essentially mm-hmm. acting like a two, twice removed version of himself and he is completely bonkers on screen. It's unbelievable. Well, since you know what I'm saying, Gary. I do. Since you're talking about Con Air though, Steve Buscemi. I gotta get your guys' peak Steve Buscemi while mm. we're here because he was in Con Air for a very short period of time I, this but was awesome. Totally easy. This one's very simple. Hmm. Okay. One, three. Mr. Deeds. Oh, Mr. Sorry. Deeds. Hundred <laughs> percent, Mr. Deeds. <laughs> it's Mr. Deeds. Is it really? Yeah. Mr. Deeds. Okay. What about you, Doss? What were you going to say on three? Fargo. Mmm. Fargo. Matt. Fargo is the correct answer. Big Lebowski, a very close second. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. But uh, definitely Fargo, just because he's given so much yeah. opportunity to show his penis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, and Kalen's going to say Boardwalk Empire, so we're going to have to ask him. Oh, that's good. I forgot to think about that. He's been in so many things. I was actually thinking Reservoir Dogs, but I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I love it, and I don't know if that's peak penis. So it's yeah, not peak I- penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. See Buscemi. So it's what, you're going to go Boardwalk? You, you were? No, not Boardwalk. I wouldn't go Boardwalk. Con Air? No, I wouldn't go Con Air Define either. irony. A bunch of idiots dancing on a plane to a song made famous by a band that died in a plane crash. That's good. It's a Con Air quote. Yeah. Put down That's the good. bunny. <laughs> I got that one right. No? You got pretty close. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd have to agree on Fargo. I can't think of anything more. Mm-hmm. More Steve Buscemi. All right. Well, he's also pretty Steve Buscemi in that movie Ghost World. That's like an indie movie that maybe not a lot of people have seen, but he plays like a super nerdy, reclusive kind of guy that you would think that that's what he's really like. All right. All right, thanks. Bye. Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> All right. The, this 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 next stuff has been take this next topic has been taken our Facebook group by storm. I don't appreciate it. It's the blue food stuff. Mm. Everybody has to chime in with their blue foods. People post pictures of blue lobsters. Someone post a picture of blue peeps. The yep. marshmallows? <laughs> yeah. You guys are getting real creative here because you can't find the blue foods. Mm-hmm. Everyone's telling everybody that they saw blue waffles once, which I don't I don't like. Yeah. Um, but Jim Curtis, he he just wrote in the captions, Press! And he put a picture of blue corn up. And everybody was liking it. Everybody yeah, loved it. Blue corn. Blue corn. I blue was corn. with Chris when you discovered this. I'm looking at it. Looked pretty blue. It looked very blue, yes, and is. I was like, "Wow!" Did yeah? That I guess I I stand corrected. There's blue corn, and then I took a closer look, and it was a drawing. This is a dr- <laughs> it was a drawing of blue corn. Like it was, it, you could see the pencil strokes. Yeah, very realistic, it, it real looked, life portrait. All right, Chris, it's called whoever, art. Whoever did whoever drew the blue corn, very talented. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, and you're very skilled. But just because you used a blue a blue colored pencil doesn't mean but that's what the color of the corn was. So, mm. still no blue foods. Sorry to say. It, Listen, guys. we didn't even right. we didn't even. I'm going to use this pun intentionally. Breach the surface of some of the underwater creatures that inhabit this planet that are blue. Blue fin tuna. Thank you. <laughs> the blue There's- whale. You know, I'm not saying I want to eat it, but if one wanted to, <laughs> dude, blue whale. Uh, every- it's fucking food for someone. Every box of tricks. Go on record has that we're against eating it. blue whales. I had some blue crab. I had blue crab. Yeah. That's better. I had blue crab. Not really blue. I had, it sure looked... Well, it's cooked, so it's red. It's not fair to say <laughs> that it wasn't blue in its life. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm just saying, man. 
I stand. I, I stand, I'm, I stand corrected. He almost said it, guys. The yeah. stuff no, no, I no. Ate, I, I stand correct. The stuff I ate from my friend's fridge that had been there for six months was most likely blue. That was probably blue. What about blue yeah. cheese? There you go. That is, Kalen, thank yeah. you. Boom. There Fucking you go. home run. Kalen, I didn't think about blue cheese. Thank you very much. My arch enemy of foods. <laughs> all right. And last. them all along. <laughs> Oh, and, la- and lastly, Jim said that uh, if you're t- we're talking about best beers, or he's talking about bad beer. He says two thirds foam keg beer is pretty bad beer. Yep. Okay. Do you guys still get kegs? What last keg you got? Mm. Myself. Like, or just yeah. Just, I mean, I don't think I've seen one in yeah, a few years. You don't. Yeah, I don't see him. At, I don't see him. The last keg I got was for my friend's engagement party because I knew a guy who worked at um, a local brewery, and he's like, "Dude, if you want a mini keg, which is like the." Yeah, the skinny cylinder. I'll get it for you. It's for like for super cheap. And he got me a great deal. I brought it to the party, and the party didn't really have that many people there. So we were just trying to pound as many beers as we could. We couldn't tap it. And I had to bring that keg back. Um, and my friend came with me because he's the one that he did it under his name. And I had to bring that thing back half full. And that was embarrassing. Yeah, dude. I think possibly my wedding. I think we may have had to, I may have had to go get some beer kegs. Just as like supporting beer, oh we had, yeah, we had like supporting a great character. beer hookup through uh, your friend. I can't remember the great name. beer hookup. You know yeah. what I'm talking about Norm? Yeah, there you go. Norm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think we also maybe got a couple kegs. But that's the you got most remote thing I can think of, and that was over five years ago now. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I think the kegs at parties and, and get-togethers. I haven't been seen much of them anymore. Hmm. But may, is it my age, or is it just they? They're Probably just getting less age. popular. It's both. It's a little bit of both. Okay, yeah. It just seems like it's becoming an. Also, outdated. there haven't been parties for the last year. Well, even the, even before that, it was, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe I don't know. Maybe we should get some more kicks and tapping them and having to get all the stuff for them. It's just kind of. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Just get the bottles and the kids. There'll probably be some kegs at the barbecue. You think? Yeah. Yeah. Might yeah, be. Yeah. All right. At the Corolla Drinks barbecue. Yeah. All right. It's coming up. That is coming up. You excited about that, Dawson? Uh, yes. Oh, good. All right. Um, Decisive. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time. All right. Well, uh, let's, see. let's see here. No outro for the Columbus, but thank you, everybody, for writing. <laughs> there is an outro. We're just not going to play it, right? That, that is correct. But there is a, an intro that I do want to play. Oh, no. What type of foods might we hear of today? What might be the price? What might be the venue? So let's find out. It's time for Gary to say, hey, Matt. Chris and Dawson, what's on the menu? Chris! Well... It's time for Shay Alaska. You made that your oh, space bar? Finally. <laughs> yeah, my space You bar. made that your space bar? You made that sound drop the biggest button on your keyboard? Because I, I need how to get How dare you? I need to get it. Get first to... of all, Chris, goddamn it. And Matt, <laughs> how dare you leaving that mic open and allowing this to happen? It was a split second failure. It was five <laughs> seconds later. You've admitted that on previous shows. Get out of here. <laughs> split second failure. All right, so when I need to get to the fast. Go on with your Shay Alaska. Okay, so. I want to hear about space it. Space bar. Yeah, Dawson and I, we went to Alaska, and we ate some great food. We had incredible meals. It was a, it was a blast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this off with, we had a labor flight in Seattle. And we were there. We were in Seattle for about an hour, maybe less. Yeah, the, from the time we landed to when the next plane departed was an hour. So we were there for less than an hour. And Dawson gets out, and he goes, I need some fish and chips. So he goes, he finds his, himself some fish and chips, and he shares with us. They're great. And I was wondering, Doss, why did you have such a craving for fish and chips? Well, because when we were trying to find a bar to get a drink, because what I said was, I need a fucking drink. And then we walked by a bar, and the guy told us, no, we're closing. But on the menu, it said fish and chips. Mm. And I was like, oh, I want some fish and chips. And then we're still looking for a bar, and then we realized there are no bars. And then you guys found one. But then I was like, I'm going back to that place that had fish and chips. And then they were closed. <laughs> oh, And so I got something else, and then I came back to where everybody was, and there was a chain seafood place that had fish and chips. I'm like, well, fuck it. Now I'm getting fish and chips. Nice. And they were great. And then uh, we get we get Not to- the kind of food you should bring onto the airport. No, That's we, pretty and- bold of the airport to have that many seafood options. Agreed. And, and Dawson – Pounded the fish and chips and we shared all, with we all, all of us. But, yeah, and and uh, and I was like, I was like, Sonny, eat some fish and chips. Uh, I can't bring this on a plane. And he's like, Why not? And I'm like, Oh yeah, you're young. It's fish and chips. You don't bring this on a plane. <laughs> yeah, you can, oh, can you imagine? Moment. 
Can you imagine sitting next to a person with fish and chips? Yeah, it's almost as bad as someone almost who as bad. Chipino to work. <laughs> Jerk. I, I set myself up for that. I get it. But then the fish and chips game got drastically upped. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, to get King Salmon Lodge. Yeah, so we get to the King Salmon Lodge. We make our way to Anchorage, King Salmon Lodge. And, uh,. And what we're, what we're, we get we get we get Hungarian goulash. They make the first night, and it's on point. It's amazing, it's fantastic. Was it? I mean, I feel like if I was in Alaska and they were like, "Here, here's some Hungarian goulash," I would go, "Am I in Hungary right now? What well, is happening?" Let me tell you about the staff at this place. So they they're all they're all seasonal, right? Because you're you're not you're not staying there for the winter. So these are all people who have jobs. Like when they're not there, they're working in like Florida or just some. Just other place for the summer, and they just go back and forth. Kind of like you're working on a cruise ship. Mm-hmm. But these are hired guns who are just professional chefs. So they had they had a guy there. Their prof- their head chef was a, like this guy from Hawaii, and he just makes everything. And he knows how to. He's just just very very skilled and very good. It was his first time making goulash, but they and requested it because they knew good. Adam was coming. Right. Learned how from fucking YouTube, and it was delicious. Nailed it. it. Was awesome. Now, even Adam was just just over the moon. Put it over rice or over uh, potato noodles or something. I, I forget what it was, but it was it was in ribeye. He's ribeye for the meat, Matt. Ooh, well, he tried. Ribeye he, made the, he made the Damn. no kettle or whatever. Yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, it's so great. It was so good. Then you got then, the texture right. Yeah, got everything fantastic. And then uh, lunch the next day, we came back from fishing, and nothing really makes you hungrier than fishing. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but you're just out on the boat all day. You get back, I'm I'm starving. I need food. Give me a bowl of chili. It's like you want chili or goulash from last night. I got both, Matt. Nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I'm sorry. The difference really between goulash and chili, the beans, huge. No, no, everything. Okay. It's a lot. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's like it's, tomatoes. It's, Hungary, it's, it's, bro- picture, it's like Hungarian chili is what goulash. It's Hungarian is. chili without the beans. So it's without beans. It's still and just chili like meat actually and shouldn't have beans anyway. Well, that's a top top. Beans, beans. 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 That is a beans. Beans are tape. Beans Let's are continue filler. with Alaskan food. Okay, yeah. Alaskan food. And then they do ribeye. They do a steak night at the at the place. They do these huge ribeyes that they marinated. I mean, again, I'm I'm sure the goulash was delicious, but you're in the Alaskan wilderness. Did you guys eat some fucking bear? Did you eat reindeer? Did you yeah. have oh, anything again, like I'll, cool? Yeah, but see, the thing is. Well, f- first they had salmon on their menu every night, and the guys They're fucking like, better. I know it's like, gosh, we're king salmon. We have salmon every night, and everyone just kept ordering land meats like steak and and the goulash, and and I'm just thinking. Oh, because they're probably just so over salmon that they're like this is their delicacy. It's just like meats that we get all the time. And we and we're not you know flooded with salmon everywhere we go, um, which kind of are. But now we're just gonna let land meats become a term. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like that. yeah, turf okay. land meat, land meat. Yeah. It's land okay. meat. <laughs> be given the choice between land meat and water meat. What you gonna be? Yeah. What you gonna be? <laughs> just checking in. Uh, what do you have on your water meat <laughs> uh, selection? <laughs> do you have one of those tree meat salads? <laughs> <laughs> the fish and chips that they made up there, though, I was thinking our last night that we had the fish and chips, and uh, it was pike. Never had pike before. How was it? Excellent. Yeah. Was it fishier or less fishy than it, the salmon? It, it was a little, I, I'm going to say a little less, well, I can't, salmon, salmon. Okay. But regular fish and like chips cod, is usually made with chips. cod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pike was a little less fishy. Oh, that sounds pretty good. It seemed like a, a cleaner cod, yeah. but you I guys love cod. do the vinegar with the chips. Always, Fuck yeah. God, tartar dude, sauce. Salt oh and vinegar. yes. What? Did, how were the chips? They're great. Were, were these they're Alaskan right. potatoes? The food straight there, from Alaska. The food there was incredible. Like, yeah, I don't know. No, if all I don't the know food where they gets shipped it on seaplane every yeah. single week. Wow. Yeah, yeah. dude. It's like because they're so, they're in such the, they're they're in the boonies. They're like, yeah. yeah if we run out of bottled water, it's like, all right, we get more on Wednesday. You know, you just you're just out for the rest of the week, and um, and but he's like, you know, it's weird though. Amazon delivers your daily. <laughs> like, like, we can't get bottled water, but if I want a mattress, I can get it tomorrow. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, from Houston. So, um, so we did that. We got moose meat. How about that, Matt? That's pretty just unusual. raw, like a package of moose meat. Well, they they put it in front of us. They grilled it, and they're just like that table behind you. Wanted they caught some moose. They wanted to give it to you, and. uh and they put it in front of us, and I ate a ton of it. It was like a moose steak? Yeah, yeah. they're like – they're just cut in the slices and just – yeah, it was moose. It, it was definitely nothing I've ever tasted before. I could I immediately found that apparent, but Dawson, it was – did you have moose? Eh, a little. You got to have a little. You had moose. Tried it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it was not – I mean – You could lose the moose. 
<laughs> lose the moose boosh. Yeah. I could lose the moose a moose boosh. <laughs> That's good. Oh yeah, a moose boosh. Um, so so, moose loose. <laughs> so it, I, I I enjoyed the moose a lot. And maybe it was a little bit of the novelty. I was really excited about that. But then, yeah, would you say it was a little moosey? It was a little, a little, a little too moosey. Yeah, yeah. it was just like the, the moose uh, taste was apparent there. And then uh, <laughs> let's see, we got some, we had some salmon that we caught that day. Fantastic! I really enjoyed it. Adam didn't wasn't re- that impressed. I got to tell you, I I agree with Adam. There, it didn't taste like fresh caught fish. Do you think they swapped when, it? When, oh, when you they catch do a, a bait trout. and switch no, after you did. did a bait and <laughs> fish? I don't, I, don't, oh. I, don't, I don't think they did. But when you catch a trout, and Kaylin knows this, when you catch of a course. trout and you grill that trout that day, it is the best fish you've ever had in your life. You can really taste the fish. Everyone knows when you catch your own water meat. I think <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I yeah. just think the window I just think the window for salmon, it's just different. Salmon, salmon. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. It, it you we could have the heat, they could have gotten this from Costco. You couldn't tell it was good, but you couldn't tell that it was caught that day. Yeah. So I was saying because the way we we can preserve salmon, it, it just tastes fresh longer. So when we get salmon even out here, it tastes yeah. just as good as if it was caught right, right out of the right. the ocean. That's that that's what I think. Maybe the thing. I, I I don't think there's a very big disparity between ultra fish fresh salmon and weak old salmon. All right, I know. I maybe it was in my brain too, but I thought I thought it was. It was good. Yeah, it was super good. Um, but it wasn't. I was I was really expecting the you know the fresh caught. Yeah, I would imagine that it would Thrill. taste better. Yeah, was it just the way that it was prepared? Prepared great. It's prepared great. Yeah. Okay. It was very good. And I then, do like my salmon a bit undercooked though. Me too. Yeah. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Do you guys have this sushi? one was definitely cooked. I wanted oh. to. They said we had to freeze at first. Which I didn't like. Was it some stupid law in Alaska? No, they just said they're parasites or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still got to get my fish. Because I was like, Adam. I because uh, they said, "Oh, you caught a lot of females," and I went, "Does that mean they have eggs?" And they're like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, they're salmon eggs." And I love salmon eggs. So some roe. Like, yeah, so I said, "Please give me the eggs," and they didn't hmm. because they said the parasites. Well, so, there you go. Yeah. Well, I guess they were doing you a flavor. I guess, I guess. Um, and then Dawson went home. Oh, no. You know what? Actually, everybody in Alaska told us to try this pizza place called Moose's Tooth. And you were like, I'm good on the moose. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, but that's just what it's called. It's like they're, they're like, oh, yeah. And and I looked it up. Best It was voted best pizza place in North America. Highest earning independent they don't know. pizza place in Buy North who? America. Yeah. Uh, pizza, convention, pizza conventions. I've Alaska been to that pizza. I've been to that convention. <laughs> no? You've been to the pizza convention? So have you. Is uh, that, wait, maybe it was you? That was adult con. <laughs> they no, had pizza there you went to a pizza convention that definitely wasn't me because i remember the best day of my life uh there was a pizza convention going on next to the convention that i went to in the in the vegas convention center that's awesome and our friend who owns a pizza place up in norcal like brought us some food constantine Oh, I did not go to this. I know. Damn, Maybe I was there. I think you were. It was yeah. you and me on like an Ace on the House. Like, that was that. Oh, trip. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that Constantine like found go. out we were going to be there and like came and fed us. He was, yeah, it was such a well, sick move. Well, that pizza convention named this place best pizza place in North America. Wow. Uh, the pizza was it's pretty good. Moose knuckle. How would, you, <laughs> is, <laughs> how would you guys feel about this though? Here were here were our pizza choices. We got two really large, big. Wonderful size. Oh, pizzas. Mama, for the Their crust was really good. Okay, and um, one of them was meatballs and like spinach. Okay, and the other one was Hawaiian. Hmm. How can you judge a pizza place if, if those, those are, are two, your two fucking those choices? Those are the only pizzas they had available. No, no, it's just that there's some guy on our trip is very, them. very into uh, certain pizza toppings like yeah, meatball yeah. and he Hawaiian. He does love yeah. the meatball. Yeah. If you're going to judge oh, a pizza you, place, I, see. I, I think see it has to be doing. judged off of just their plain cheese. Really? Pepperoni. Yeah, that's or correct. pepperoni. Like, you pepperoni. can do pepperoni margarita? if you want to get... Mm. I think a margarita for me. Yeah, I'm going to keep That's not a standard pizza. That's not a... That's a specialty. Tell that pie. to all the citizens in Margarita, Italy, who yeah. invented that pizza. And Margaritaville. Yeah. Okay. Tell them, too. I'll tell them. <laughs> yeah. I'll call them, them up. Too. No, yeah. dude, call we'll them wait. up. We'll wait, bro. <laughs> They're wasting away again. <laughs> yep. I think pepperoni is the way to test it. I, I'm i not uh, 
a huge denier of the Hawaiian pizza. I feel like that's a fine pizza. I know a lot of people mm. flip out over it. I, I like really it. like it. Yeah, I, I like think it. it's really Not good. Not a fan. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people strongly wow. dislike it. Uh, my old roommate, visit airsoftgi.com, used to do pepperoni and pineapple. That's fine. Right. I'm okay with You're that. You're right with that? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Sure. And, and, and if, in fact, in some Midwestern states, it is, it's a misdemeanor to put <laughs> pineapple on. On a pizza, you yeah. get you get a seventy five dollar ticket for that. Yeah, Gary, you can't. Wow. Gotta go to court. You gotta go appear in court. <laughs> pizza court. Things that are illegal. And the pizza guy <laughs> is there. The pizza guy gets paid to be at court to testify against you. So, what pizza slice did you end up choosing then, Dawson? Between that, uh, so the meatball choice that you one, had, the meatball one, and meatball it was it was spinach? really good. It was, was it, it was like spinachy, meatball, some... parmesan, spinach. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. It, was, it, was, it was good. It was good, but you know, throw down the pepperoni, bro. Oh. That's now, a the pizza. Meatball in general is a little bit misleading because if you want a great meatball, they're gigantic. You can't really put them on a pizza. Yeah. They were like meatballs about the size of golf balls, but cut in half. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually still pretty Like everyday. they're about an eighth of a newborn and they were half domes. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah. Do you good. think when they made them, they were full dome and then they cut them in half? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You start, you got to start full dome. Yeah. Um, and then, and then Dawson left. And then I went on a little – because Jen was on the trip too. Who's that? My fiancé. Oh, I almost said it. Almost did it. Soon. Chills. Chills. Um, goosebumps. So we, we went out and we got some food. We went to uh, this place called Humpy's, which is like their local – Huh? What we, is this place? I went to Humpy's with Jen. It's a local what? Uh, it's, a, it's a local uh, massage parlor. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's a place called Humpy's. Um and they're just they're just like a Alaskan staple. Everybody in Anchorage knows where that is. And it's not like amazing, but it's just like, ah, here in Anchorage. not much else go. to do. You yeah. got to go. Got to go hit up Humpies. So we went to Humpies, got some halibut fish and chips. Nice. Just for the halibut? Just for the halibut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were in Anchorage, might as well. And uh, and I thought they were very that was very good. Got a uh, salmon chowder. Nice. That sounds good. Yeah. I like the sound of that. Of course, good. you would get a fish based stew. Very good. I love chowder. Uh, was look, it white or red? I was thinking there's not a lot you can chowder that I won't like. Uh, yeah. yeah, chowder it. It's just like if you pickle it. I yeah. want you to was chowder it. Was it the white or the red? I white. feel the same way with chimichangas. Chong yeah. it, bro. Chong it. Yeah. Just chong it. Chong coin. Yeah. Chonga and chowder it. Ooh, a chonga. Ooh, chonga and chowder. Ch- chonga chowder. Dude, if I can get a oh chonga God. chowder. Oh. Oh. Wait, wow. Mr. Cuban, don't leave just yet. <laughs> oh, my God. Chonga chowder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You think it would be unprofessional so if I good. just text him a link to this episode? <laughs> That's be so good. <laughs> <laughs> no description. Just, just, iTunes you're link. welcome. Just press play. Just an iTunes link. Money, please. <laughs> press play. Here's my Venmo. <laughs> um, yeah. Then we. Th- so that was really. That was really great. We did Chunk that. Chonga chowder. Ch- ch- dude, chonga chowder. I'm there. Yeah. So I thought I liked the same chowder. Making a recipe but, in my head. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> we have so to do this. First, Mexican. <laughs> It's Mexican oh, clam chowder. It's chonga yeah. chowder. Uh, yes, yeah. there are little deep fried burritos in it. Uh, yes. <laughs> Why are you questioning this? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. They had uh, a little bit of crab cakes too. Okay. okay. You great. sent me a picture of like a hot dog cart, but it was reindeer hot dogs. Yeah. What's yeah. up? What was that like? It was. Incredible. Was it better than the reindeer that we had on our Christmas Patreon special <laughs> several months ago? Don't you dress up as Santa That's and right. then ate it <laughs> next to a doll of Rudolph? It wasn't that one. That one tastes a little more unique than mm-hmm. probably because it came in a can. Did you? Yeah. Did you go for the king crab? The can <laughs> was so gross, Matt. <laughs> you did couldn't you, even get it open. <laughs> did you get some king crab? I did get some king crab. How was big it? was it? How much did it cost? And what color was it? It was <laughs> blue. <laughs> It was a pound and a half, which was basically two, like two a, legs. Le- a leg and a claw. Yeah. Like a leg and then one whole arm with a claw on it. Right. With a what? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was basically a leg and, uh, and then an arm with a... Oh, my goodness! The claw! On it. <laughs> so, <laughs> of all the ones you can get, <laughs> several are just the word claw. Yeah, I don't label them right. <laughs> <laughs> How much was it? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was market price. What is <laughs> great answer? It was, it was so you don't you don't order king crab in Los Angeles, yeah, but was, you order king crab in Anchorage. 
you you'd think you would actually. It's actually right. very expensive in Anchorage. It's sixty nine dollars. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's um, okay. Yeah. That's- it might be like 89 right down here. Then. Yeah. They said it's typically like 59, but market price, would they, they rose it up to there. Yeah. And, um, and, and the waiters but, like saying it. Yeah. But the guys at the King Salmon were like, oh, yeah, don't order it. It's super expensive here in Anchorage, like, even though it's local. Like, it's fresh. Why wouldn't I order it here? Yeah, I know. I thought that's what I have to get here. Yeah. But, yeah definitely. I would have done it. I don't blame you. D- definitely. You got to do it. But the highlight, though, Matt, was this place called the Bubbly Mermaid. It's, I know it sounds like a cocktail that you would yeah, order. I was, <laughs> Chris, I had the same thing lined up. Um, it's this place that specializes in champagne and oysters. Okay. Yeah. That's all they have, actually. That sounds right. That is Mad's all eye. they have. And the only way you can, um, you can eat there is you make a reservation, by, but you have to text by texting the guy, the owner. So you text the owner. It's like, what day do you want to come? He's like, uh, we'll come July 4th. All right, come at 5. All right, we'll be there. Uh, I need a he need a hundred dollar deposit. Uh, I mean, an undisclosed wow. amount, a deposit that That's you can a, only use in champagne. How much are you going to spend on this champagne? You can't spend it on the oysters. No. So you're pot committed to a hundred dollars worth of champagne or more, yes. minimum. And minimum. then the bottles of champagne are hundred thirty dollars. I wish. Two hundred. I wish. I wish. I wish. Um, so it's like okay, we're in Anchorage. It's Jen's birthday too. It's a, it's like her birthday trip. Uh, and I told her I'd. I'd Does handle. she like oysters? Oh, we love okay, good. oysters. Because I know you do. Oh yes, but, I do. You know, I can also see you going like Jen. I know it's your birthday. Yeah, but I'm getting oysters. So we go. This place looks like a dive bar. We're kind of looking inside, like oh, it's, it's it's just a it's just a small dive bar. And there's this other couple outside, and they just look at us like, "You guys, the five o'clock too?" And we're like, "Yeah, okay." So it'll just be us two, because he only has four people in at a time. And it's just very wow. This is super exclusive. Yeah. And but this guy who are with like I come here all the time. Um, I'm, he's like super enthusiastic. He loves champagne. He's like, oh, you guys like if you guys want to split a bottle, we can do that instead. You know, we can we can do that and let's just let's just try different things. And we're like, oh, we'll feel it out. We'll feel it out. And uh, we get in and and uh, and this guy just like he's, he's it's just one guy in there and he's bringing out oysters and he's giving he's like, what champagne do you guys want to go to? And like it's like two fifty for a bottle. Ooh, yeah. And we're like, oh, maybe we'll split one with this guy here. So we split them. We split with that couple. We're having a good time, and um, and uh, we try all the we try all the oysters, and they're all from like they're all from. Oh, this is the best part, by the way. So we're telling the people at the King Salmon Lodge, we're going to the Bubbly Mermaid. They're like, oh, that is a place you got to go. That's like the highlight place you got to go when you're in Anchorage. He gets these he gets these oysters all the way from Mexico, and I'm just there like, yeah, I'm like right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really, you're really gonna <laughs> all right. Yeah, so that that's like that was their high. Like he gets them all the way from Mexico, which is a delicacy for them, but not in Southern California. But I'm just like, oh, it's travel. Time. That's an hour drive. <laughs> I could get I could get Mexican oysters. Yeah, like just down the street. Yeah, what are you talking? But but how was it? I mean, I imagine best if it's oysters being, I've ever had. Yeah, he gave me five. He gave us six. Well, he gave us six different kinds. That's what came comes in like this. And by the way, oysters are super cheap. They're like two fifty or three bucks each. And he's just like. Just bringing them out, and they're well they're, super cheap. If it's not you, you had to have put down a hundred of them. Oh well, I didn't. Well, I only stuck with the six. It was because we're going to get dinner, get king crab somewhere else. Oh, okay. So we're I'm eating these oysters, and they're the best oysters I've ever had. He like knows them. He tells them where where, where they're from, and and then he gives us he makes us oyster shooters, and he's giving us that. And we're like having fun. We're talking to this couple with us in there, and this guy. This guy we're talking to, money is not an issue to him. He's ordering all these bottles of champagne. He lets Jen like take the saber and cut open one of them with like the, with the the sword. Yeah, dude. And so we did, we did that, and and we're talking about what what he does, and he's like, oh yeah, I just I just bought a th- you play music. I'm like, yeah, I, play music. I just bought a synthesizer. Yeah, I flew down to California, just got one. And he's by the way, he's younger than me. Like he looks like he's younger than me. Yeah, I flew down to California, got one, but I, I carried it in my lap because you know it's so valuable. I didn't want to. I didn't want anything to happen to it if I checked it in. I'm like, oh, which one was it? Like, oh, here, I got, a, I got a picture of it. He pulls up the reverb listing for it. It's $22,000. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, oh, that's the synth that you flew down to California to yeah, buy. Yeah, that's why you don't check that thing. Yeah, exactly. So so Jen takes a picture of them, and it's like, oh, we made new friends. And one of my buddies who's in the restaurant business is like, is that Kyle? Is that guy's name Kyle? And we're like, yeah. I totally changed his name for his protection. But I guess he <laughs> – Protection. <laughs> But I guess he like he was a CEO of some high end restaurant that uh, and you I googled him and it's all he was but he 
had to step down because his staff like turned on him because they were they were like getting sexually they felt they were getting sexually harassed or not treated fairly whatever it was like hmm. you had not, oysters with a guy who was canceled yeah he was canceled but not necessarily it was him but he's just like this company was so he's like I'm stepping down because I don't want to be you know I I I respect these people and I don't, I, I shouldn't be here anymore whatever and he moved to Alaska and that was, yeah that's who it was and we didn't even realize um and uh yeah so we we ate some oysters Matt paid a ton of money for champagne and went to the Bubbly Mermaid and that's what's on the menu. Nice. Yeah. Great job. No, I'll I'll last wow. Time. I'm oh. hungry. Well done. <sighs> yeah, I'm hungry now, too. Yeah, Jesus. There we go. Anyway, thanks for listening nice to you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Dude, the food segment's not as easy, easy as I thought. You did a great job. I should have known. I should have had a post it. Mm. I should have posted yeah, it. I, that I was, was helpful. I was free balling mm-hmm. it the entire time. Yep. But I'm glad we got Chonga Chowder. And if nothing else. We got and, a new, and, 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 incredible new product. And, uh, Water meat. <laughs> <laughs> Land meat and water meat. Water meat. <laughs> oh, so good. All right. Well, so that good. I think we're good. Uh, we, that's, that's, that's everything, right? That's good. They're flicking? Oh, yeah. We'll I'm, I'm not trying to extend it. I'm sorry. I, you know, <laughs> that's okay. We yeah. can, we'll save it for Patreon. Okay. What are you going to flick? Uh, I am going to flick at least a movie called Fear Street 1994. And if there's time, I'll do the, the part two, which is Fear Street 1964. 78. 7? 67? 78. 78? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, it might be a good. We might get a double feature. I get a double Thanks feature. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Gary double shocked by that. I, he couldn't believe, believe there might be two movies. Mm. Completely shocked. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get our plugs in then. Kalen, what should we check out for you? What do you suggest other people check out? They should check out our Patreon so they can hear my Fear Street reviews. Ooh, nice. that's good. How, how do people do that? What do they do? Patreon.com slash Water Cooler. Water Cooler. Water cooler. So hair's, clean. Your hair's getting long, by the way. No, no. You growing it out? Yeah. Are you growing it out, or are you apathetic and haven't gone to get a haircut? Yeah, that, oh, that one. That one. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Look at Gary. Copy, copy that. Good read. Yeah. I've been there. Uh, what What do you suggest we should check out, Gary? I would also suggest that you check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash watercooler. <laughs> and uh, we just announced on the last episode of Patreon that for the people who subscribe to our top tier, we're going to start doing a monthly meetup. And uh, we'll all hang out on Zoom and have a claw together, and we can talk about whatever you guys want. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing the drops. <laughs> Nice. Matt, what about you? Uh, Well, I uh, am also a co-host on another show called Sword and Scale Rewind, which is the official after show. (laughs) Gary, what's what's, what's wrong with this plug? What's up? You can give me a face. I'm allowed to co-host other shows. Gary gave me a face. What was that? He didn't like it. He he just wants to all I just thought it was interesting. It was Patreon, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people get the Patreon. You know, we get it. Sure. Two, two first two plugs. Sure, it's been double plugged. Okay, yeah. there's another show that's. Let's listen know, to a do. different audio product. <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm just saying, if you want to diversify a little bit, I, of course, I love our Patreon shows, but I also do a show called Sword and Scale Rewind, yes. where we talk about the most the the next episode of Sword and Scale. So we started. Uh, we're probably about 20 episodes behind. We're catching up. And you should check it out. All right, there you go. And the animations are hilarious. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a guy animating stuff for us. And yeah. uh, I'm going to let everybody know there's one coming out this week that I'm very excited about. I told a story on that show about the time I ran away from home. And I don't think I've ever told that story on this show. I'm Why sorry. Not? It's never come up. It's, it's never, never come, come up. up. The idea, the topic of running away from home. Dawson's told the same story we, like four times, and you're not going <laughs> to tell one new story. <laughs> I'm just saying that show's about like murder and kidnapping and runaways, and a lot of weird shit comes up. And I told a story about the time that I ran away from home, and this dude is animating it, and it will be seen by the world. I can't wait to share it. It's I wanna, hilarious. I kind of want to undercut this release by having Matt tell the story on the Patreon. <laughs> nope, not going to do it. Not gonna do it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Nice. But yeah, check it out. Sword and Scale Rewind with yep. Matt Fondelier and, and Ian Bag. Bag. Who, if you don't know who that is, he's fucking hilarious. Yeah. All right, Doss, what about you? Major Bag Alert. Major <laughs> Bag Alert. Yeah, see? Yeah. There it is. You know him. Yeah, check out my new podcast, Sword and Scale Rewind. I do yes. with Ian Bag. Yes. I got a new one coming out. It's weird that you decided to create a show, call it the same name as mine, hire the same co-host, yeah. and, then, Coattails. and then release it at the, on the same day. That's weird. weird. Matt, you've seen, the, science. you've seen the, the South Park episodes. It's the first step before profit. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Right. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to be uh, guest hosting a another effing podcast presented by Metal Edge Magazine. Um, we got Tim Mosher of the band Junkyard on, and uh, it'll be me and Izzy Presley, and we're doing the whole thing on. Uh, uh, you can join live. You know, you can probably see it live. Just go to uh, Spreaker, Spreaker dot com slash user slash Izzy Presley, 
And that's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Hey, Doss. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Can you spell that? Because I have no idea how to try to spell whatever word you just said. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Mm-hmm. Nice. Spreaker.com slash user slash Izzy Presley. Yeah. And by tomorrow night. Tuesday. So, July what? So you're posting this Something. tonight now, Chris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> July 13th. Oh, shoot. I didn't even think of that because we usually do this on Tuesday. So, yeah, I guess. Tonight. Tonight. Or July 13th, whatever. July 13th. It was Tuesday. last week. We really, we <laughs> taped this yeah. a long time Chris ago. Chris got really lazy and didn't post this. <laughs> yeah. July 13th, 7 p.m. Pacific. Great. All right. And you're, yeah, you're, uh, and Dawson and Izzy are great together. Yeah. And Izzy killed it on stage with Dawson. Chris, where can we go for you? Uh, as for me, oh, I have shows coming up. Let's see here. I wrote them down. So on July 23rd and 24th, I'll be playing at Marina Wine. Doing acoustic sets, 7 to 10 p.m. And then July 30th, I'll be with my band, Loxy. We're playing at the Pike starting at 8. We might, we'll probably just play all night. The Pike in Long Beach. It's a Pike Bar Restaurant Grill. It's owned by the uh, drummer from Social Distortion. I heard and that's then, better than the COD. Oh, oh, it is. They got, they actually got great fish and chips there, too. And then on July 31st, I'm playing at the Prospector in Long Beach for so the next night. So we're doing Friday night, Saturday night in Long Beach. Nice. Come out. The bands are playing. We'll have a good time. We'll dance our butts off. And uh, and also check out patreon.com slash watercooler. All right. That'll do it for today's episode of Watercooler. We'll see you later this week for Patreon. We love you. Goodbye. <laughs>